Well, I, I believe that Jordan Love is a very well thought out and diplomatic speaker. And so he's always going to say the right thing and strike and being upbeat and deferential to the organization that he's working for and the team that at some point is going to pay him. And I do think that there is a chance that that deal does get done by the timeline he's talking about. But I don't think it's a certainty. I think that there have been discussions. There continue to be discussions. Both sides would like to get something done. But if it were close, it would be done right now. And I don't think it's done yet. And I don't know, like, what's close, right? Do I think that that deal is getting done today? No, I don't. Do I think it's getting done this week? I would guess not, but maybe something could come together. They're going to continue talking. Jordan's going to say the right thing. He's going to deliver the right message. And he did that yesterday. Uh, and he gave, I think, Packers fans some hope that this deal could be done by training camp. Again, wouldn't be a surprise. There's motivation for both sides to do it. But I don't think it's as close yet as he made it saying yesterday. Adam, which side do you think has more leverage? Oh. L listen, if, if you're Jordan Love and you want to bet on yourself and you believe in yourself and you believe that what you did at the end of the last year is exactly what you're capable of, and I don't know why it wouldn't be, then you just keep routing it out. But the money's so great, Chewy, that why would you pass on it? Like, if we're doing the Jordan Love deal right now, and I don't think it's hard, let's just come up with a number, $52.5 million, right? Mm -hmm. So let's call it four years, four years, $210 million. Why, why would you turn that? Like, why would you not do that if you're a player? Like, of course you'd do that. You know, how much guaranteed? 100 guaranteed? 110? I don't know the exact guaranteed. I have to sit down and talk to people and crunch numbers. But, I mean, if you can get that kind of money, then to me, y y you go do it and you get it done. That that's what I think. I agree. And then you make it up because, Adam, when I, when I was a rookie, right, I, I came in with a back injury. And the Packers thought I hid it from them, which I did. And yep. uh, they wanted 30000 back of my first year's salary. So I had no leverage. So obviously I have to, but I logged it. And I said, when I did my next big deal, I said, oh, by the way, I want that thirty want grand back. back. Yeah. So oh, I think oh, yeah. that yep. that would be something uh, the love camp could, should consider. You know, okay. So they're they're gonna they're gonna take away two three million dollars a year from this contract. Make it up on the next. Say, hey, remember when you guys kind of screwed me on this other deal? I want that back. By the way, let me say this: if he does a a, a four year extension, we're just throwing out random years. I'm, I'm sure Green Bay would want it to be longer. By the way, uh, th th there is going to be time to do another deal and make so much money. And this mm -hmm. deal would lock in the future of his children's children. So, like, why would you not do that if you had the opportunity? And then if you play the way that you think you're going, then you're already building towards the next deal. Like, it's it's simple. Mm -hmm. You know, get it done, knock it out. So, and by the way, if you're Green Bay, I don't think you want to wait till that DAC deal gets done at some point in the next year. You want to do this deal before that DAC deal so there's motivation for Green Bay and there's motivation to procure your future by the way what if jordan love just crashes and burns this year and doesn't play well like i don't think that's happening you know he showed too much talent and promise but what if it did what if, what if he flames out right then then you locked up that long-term deal anyway and not only are you locking up that long-term deal but you're setting yourself up to start the clock towards the next deal so i think there's motivation for both sides to get this done which is why it should get done and why you'd have to think that these two sides would be able to come together and figure out a way to get this done some point this summer, whenever that is, whether that's this month, next month, or into August. Adam, do you think that the Packers communicate with Jacksonville and maybe Miami and say, hey, how high are you going to go on Trevor Lawrence or Tua, just so we know where we're at? Do you think they communicate uh, or no? Yeah. I, you know, well, by the way, would that be collusion? Yeah, I was going to use collusion, but 
I decided not you know, to. So, so I, I, yeah, I, I don't know that you have, I mean, well, that, I, it would be illegal to collude. Like, I guess collude to keep the price down. But I, I think that at the very least, Chewy, here's what I would say. You're aware. Like, I've had people say to me uh, in various quarter, what's going on with that quarterback's contract? So that tells me, obviously, these people are not in the know, but they are curious. Now, could a GM who has a relationship with a GM say, hey, hey, where are you on Trevor Lawrence? Where are you on Tua? Where are you on Dak? Sure. That, that, that absolutely could happen. And I can totally see that. But I think everybody has a general sense, to be perfectly frank, where things are going to come in. I don't think that any of these deals are going to be terribly surprising to any of the teams that are in the market to do quarterback deals. I think they have a general understanding of where that market is and where it's going to be.